Hi, I'm Doug Young for Acoustic Guitar, and uh, today I wanted to look at a piece of software called Isotope RX, which is a noise reduction software, very useful for recording, whether you're recording in a professional studio or at home. Uh, acoustic guitar especially is a very quiet instrument, and noises have a way of creeping in. It could be air conditioning noise, it could be your neighbor's dog, could be uh, the television on in another room, uh, or just you know some kind of background noise, or it could be noise from the guitar itself, because when we play guitar, uh, the microphones tend to pick up things uh, more dramatically than in person. You may not notice little finger squeaks or, or uh, clicks from your pick and so on. And yet the microphone will pick those up really loudly uh, a lot of times in recording. And so often when you listen back to recording, you, you're disappointed. Yeah, I, you don't think you make that much noise, you know. Uh, so this software will help you clean up your recordings and uh, it can, it can help remove all of those noises in different ways. The software takes two forms. There's a standalone program, and then there's also plugins that can run inside of your existing recording setup. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Logic, and I'll show you the plugins, and then we'll switch over and I'll show you the standalone program. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by taking a look at some of the plugin versions of RX-8. Uh, RX-8 is just was just released, by the way, and one of the cool new features is this guitar denoise plugin, and that's what we're going to start with. So I've got a little track here that's got uh, a squeak on it. Let's listen. Kind of a loud squeak that leaps out at you. So I'm going to bring up this plugin. It's called Guitar Denoise activate it. We've got three different tools here. We've got a pick removal uh, tool, a squeak removal tool, and amplifier noise removal uh, for electric guitars mostly. So I'm just going to turn it on. Let's listen to that squeak. It's gone. Now we can fine tune this. I'll click on this little icon, little ear icon, and I'll, we'll hear only the squeaks. So we could adjust the sensitivity to squeaks uh, or decrease it. That squeak is so loud that it doesn't take much sensitivity to pick it up. But some quieter squeaks, you might need more sensitivity. If you overdo it, you might start removing some of the sound of your guitar, which you don't want to do. But once you adjust the sensitivity, you can also control how much in volume the squeak will be reduced. So we can go up. Or we can go to a, a lower reduction. If we just do a little bit, we can leave some of that squeak in. So we can really control how much we'd, uh, if you think a little bit of squeak sounds more natural, leave a little bit in, uh, but you don't, uh, you can cut it down so it's not, uh, you know, making you jump out of your chair the way the original squeak was. Uh, let's go look at another example and we'll look at the pick uh, noise. Here I've got a strumming example. Let's turn off quick, click. Um, There's just a few little noises in there. It's really not too bad. Uh, let's activate the click, the, the pick click, uh, and crank up the sensitivity. Let's hear what we hear. Now there you see where I'm overdoing it, and we're actually uh, picking up some of the attack of the guitar. But we've got an attack control, sensitivity control, and we can use that to isolate the click. There we go. So see now there's a, you can hear the pick attack right on the very first note. So let's turn off the uh, preview and let's hear how it sounds with that removed. So now let's take a look at another example, different kind of noise. This is broadband background noise, the kind you might get from air conditioning or traffic going by. And what I did to make sure we had plenty of noise to work with here was that I turned on a fan while I was recording. So let's listen to how that sounds. Listen to all that noise. We don't want to hear that on our recording. So what I'm going to do is bring up a different plugin called the RX Spectral Denoise Program. The way this thing works is that we have to learn the profile of the noise and then we can remove it. So I'm going to click on the learn button and then I'm going to play a little sample of that fan noise. And you can see that it's learned to profile. From there, we can adjust things, adjust the profile. We can adjust how much noise reduction we want to have done. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy with this because it can remove some of the musical sounds. I'm going to go for about a 14 dB reduction, which is pretty substantial. So that's it. It's on. Let's hear how it sounds now. The noise is practically reduced and the uh, recording still sounds fine.
So that's an example of the plugins that you can use right in your recording environment. Now let's take a look at the standalone program. So here we have uh, the standalone program and you can see in this mode, it looks like a, a regular audio editor with our waveform. But if we slide this view over, we get a totally different view. This is a spectral view. And what we've got is time across the X axis, frequency on the Y axis and intensity of sound uh, uh, indicated by color. And so with a little bit of practice, you can actually see noises and things. This is the first example I had with the squeak. Let's listen to this. There's that squeak. And we can actually see it right there. And we can go in and select just the squeak and isolate it. Squeak. And then we can use this tool called Spectral Repair, which is similar to the guitar noise reduction, except that we've got a lot more control. So this is uh, more useful if you've got some problems. You know, that the Guitar Denoise plugin is going to work great right in your DAW for removing a lot of squeaks and just broad processing over your entire track. This is more useful if you've got problem areas and you want to go in and surgically fix up particular spots. So we've got four different algorithms that can be applied and some you'll find that with different noises, some of them work better than others. Uh, I've set this one up just sort of a uh, normal. This is going to attenuate the squeak and let's, uh, let's just click. I've selected a squeak area. Let's click render. It's gone. Just like that. Uh, just to understand a spectral view. This is the example where I had the fan running and look at how clearly we can see the background noise. Uh, the, all this bright red and green that normally, as you saw in the other one, um, actually you didn't because I had it zoomed in. There's what the background looked like in a relatively quiet. All these brighter spots in the beginning are, you know, me rustling around in my chair and moving. But in general, the background is pretty light, not a lot of, of a sound there. Whereas with the fan running, we've got this broadband noise. And just as in the... Uh, other example with the plugin, there's also a spectral denoise that we can use. We can learn what the signature of this is. And in fact, we can even learn a specific part. If we only wanted to remove the lower frequencies, we could select this, learn that, and then remove that from the track. So pretty powerful. Let's look at another example. Here's a common thing. Acoustic guitar is so quiet that uh, we pick up a lot of strange little noises. For example, breathing is a problem. Here is a track that I recorded where I deliberately took a big breath right between a phrase. Let's listen. Hear the breath. And we can see the breath. After a while, you sort of learn to see these patterns. So there's the breath. Let's listen to it. The big breath. So what can we do? I'm going to uh, tweak this just a little bit. I think this calls for a little more strength, so I'm going to up the strength level of this plugin and I'm going to hit render. And just like that, the breath is gone. Okay. Now that's the next problem in this recording. I rustled in my chair. That's really awful. So what can we do to repair that? This is where we have a couple different algorithms in this plugin. Uh, we have attenuate, replace, a pattern, partials, noise. You can read about what each of those means in the manual. I have found from experience that noises like this work best with replace and um, probably even waiting there. Let's give it a try. Looks good. Let's hear how that sounds. Now I missed one. Here's another little rustle in my chair, but it, it looks to me just visually like it's a really low frequency. So I'm just going to select it down here, just this piece, so that I'm only operating on part of my audio and not risking damaging other parts. Let's fix that. There we go. Let's hear that. So we were able to remove uh, some objectionable noises and just sort of go in and surgically fix particular spots. We're not even touching the rest of the audio, which increases the odds that you won't do anything damaging to the audio as far as the noise removal. Let's look at one final example. This is kind of fun. This is a real recording that I made where my cat decided to chime in at the very end, at the, at the tail, right when you want to keep everything as quiet as possible. Let's hear what happened. Here. So I can uh, select, try to just select the part where she makes a noise. And I think attenuate will work fine on this. I don't even think I need that much strength. 
Let's click on render. And she's completely gone. So there's with the cat. And I'll redo. There's the cat gone. So that's just a quick example. As you can see over in the right hand side, there are lots of plugins. Uh, some of these are special purpose, but there are uh, declip plugins if you've distorted and clipped your signal. Uh, things for dealing with crackle. A lot of things for vocalists, de essers, uh, de plosives. There's a de reverb, which works pretty well, on, especially on dialogue. If you're in, have a recording people talking in a room, it's a little too echo echoey. Uh, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different controls here, but those are the main ones that I use on guitar is a spectral denoise, spectral repair. Uh, there's also a spectral recovery, which is new in RX-8. This is useful if you have a low bandwidth uh, uh, recording, like say it was recorded over a telephone with limited frequency response. It can actually extend the frequency response and try to recover some of what's missing. There's also a lot of tools in RX-8 for audio editing, just sort of normal things. You can normalize you can do phase adjustments. You can uh, you know, signal generators and pitch generators. You can vary the time, vary the pitch. A lot of uh, interesting things, but here we're focused mostly on noise. So that is RX-8, Isotope RX-8, new uh, version that was just released. And by the way, there are three versions of this program, Elements, Standard, and Advanced. Elements is fairly basic and does not contain most of the features that we looked at today. The, all, I believe everything we looked at today is in the standard version and, of course, also in the advanced version. There is a free trial if you want to download it and try it out for yourself and see if it works on your noises and your types of recordings. For Acoustic Guitar, I'm Doug Young.